Hi, uh, uh, good evening. I just wanted to break down some uh, really um, simple theory that Alan uh, Holdsworth talks about uh, for beginner level students uh, because I, I think it's relevant and it speeds up the learning process. A really interesting thing happened when I was at Restoration Youth Arts Academy in Brooklyn. I had a four-year-old in my classroom and it was almost, a, he was a good kid, it was, uh, but it was almost kind of like a behavioral problem. Uh, because he would disrupt class, he would get lonely, uh, he'd want to drink orange juice. He had to have his orange juice because his mom wasn't there. And so, I mean, every time something like that uh, happened, there would be like well, a disruption. I mean, even though it wasn't a behavioral disorder, it was just something that, that he required. Um, and uh, it was fascinating because he was a really quick learner uh, when he wasn't uh, in an emotional state. I was able to show him a major skill in one hour, uh, and, and in one hour he was able to play it in all 12 keys. Um, and uh, that's how uh, simple uh, it is to understand some Alan Holdsworth uh, ideas uh, when it's applied to um, just beginner guitar. And t to me it was fascinating. I mean, people, uh, guitarists have a huge amount of uh, respect for Alan Holdsworth because he's very technical. Um, and, and so I don't know if it was me or, or, uh, or Alan Holdsworth, but the ideas uh, really work and bake, bake together really quickly to form behaviors that were just like spectacular. I can't get, you know, an 11 year old to learn it that fast, but a four year old picked it up really quickly. So it was just really fascinating to see. I'll, I'll see if I could break it down. Alan Holdsworth would talk about tetrachords, and all really all it is, a tetrachord is just four notes of a scale. Um, the first four notes of, of any scale, any eight note scale, and uh, um, you could form a tetrachord with the last uh, four notes of an eight note scale. So you divide a scale in, in half, and you've got two tetrachords. Well, a major sc a scale is comprised of uh, a tetrachord with uh, two whole tones and a half tone. So this would be a whole tone right here. This defined, is defined as a whole tone. Okay, a, a, a half tone is right. A half tone looks like that. Okay, so uh, a half tone would be adjacent steps on the fretboard, and a whole tone would be uh, the second adjacent step over. Okay, so you've got two whole tones and a half tone. C, D, E, F. And so if you move this grip up here, same grip, that's your, uh, you've played the tetrachord twice, uh, the tetrachord that has two whole tones and a half tone, and you get G, A, B, C. So uh, what you want to get a feel for is the grip that you're using and the way that the grip looks, right? Okay, if you can imagine on a keyboard, there's a set of two two black keys on a top row and there's a set of three black keys on a top row to the left of the the, the first set of two keys uh, is where your letter c is always going to be located on a piano so if you can imagine here in this space where uh, there are no fingers on the fretboard uh, there would be two black keys this would be a c okay and it's common knowledge that you could run your finger across the keyboard and play every note uh, on the bottom row and you're gonna have a major scale. It's just that easy. A lot of people do that. It's a, it's a party trick, um, but people uh, really enjoy that because it's just really easy and it sounds like you're Jerry Lee Lewis without you even have, having to try, right? You don't have to get hair gel or anything. It's that cool. So you just, um, you form the grip this way. Okay, so we'll do this again really slowly. I'm playing on fret one, fret three, fret 5, and fret 6, and then I move it up, G is on fret 8, uh, A is on fret 12, uh, B is on, uh, sorry, G is on fret A, G is on fret 8, uh, A is on fret 10, B is on fret 12, and the, the C an octave up from the first fret is on fret 13. So we'll go over that again. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. C, B, C, B, A, G, A, B, C. Right? Okay? So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. See if we can 
sing that low. Hold on. probably sing it an octave lower if I tried but I'm not gonna do that here um, okay yeah I love singing so we've got um, that's a major scale right there really succinctly in a nutshell we've got the major scale and uh, how to construct it starting on the letter C um, if you do this and this pattern applies across all six strings of course it's gonna be in a different key each time you play it so if you play it from the first string uh, this, these are open E strings uh, from uh, bottom to the top, uh, from the top row to the bottom row, you've got an E, A, D, G, B, E. This would be an F, right? So you've got F, G, A. I'm gonna have to do that lower. It's F, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, F, E, D, C, B flat, A, G. Try that again. F E D C B flat A G F. Okay. Um, this right here is a G string. The third um, string up from the bottom of the four is a G string. If you play that, that's going to be an A flat, right? string right here is D. So half a step above it would be an E flat. a little off maybe uh, it's just my intonation that's all so we've got in there. So Okay, so that's how you would name it's the same pattern, right? But that's how you name um frets one, three, five, seven. Sorry, with frets one, three, five, six, eight, ten, twelve, and thirteen. Uh, which um, form a really easy major scale. You could take the same tetra score, uh, tetra chord, 
and play it across two strings. You just have to be very careful about where you find the beginning note of the next tetrachord. And that's interesting too. So uh, if I start here, here again at um, the letter C. C, D, C, C, D, E, F. Mm -mm -mm. C, D, E, F. That's the first tetrachord, right? Second tetrachord would be here. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. It's really high up. I'm not a good um, alto singer. C, C, B, A, G, F, E, B, C. Actually, I am a good singer. I just have to prepare for it. If I'm not ready, I'm not going to sing the note. So C, B, A, G, F, E, B, C. Um, so the tetrachord starts on the, uh, the first tetrachord starts on on the first fret, just like we did across the fretboard, and then. Um, you can think of it this way. Well, uh, if you're trying to locate uh, the G on the next string, a good trick to remember that is, well, the guitar is tuned. A lot of people know how to tune the guitar. Some people don't. But there's this trick on the guitar uh, where you play the E right here on the second string, and then you play the E on, on the first string also. Okay? So... If that's an E, that's an F, that's a G. Okay, this is an F. You can hear that. What you would have to do is find a similar note, and then you go up a whole step from that. So you've got a G here. G, A, G, C, B, A, G, F, E, B, C. So, really simple pattern. Uh, what we're trying to do is eliminate thinking from the guitar. You can watch where your fingers go to a certain extent, but your your hand is always going to be a lot quicker than your eye, you know, uh, and your muscle memory is going to be a lot quicker than uh, remembering the, where to put your fingers on down on on the fretboard when you play. So when I play, I'm really not thinking about where my fingers go. I just know uh, from my grips and the feel of things uh, from from practicing it, um, uh, how it feels when I play a major scale. So it's something that I have committed to my muscle memory. My, my body remembers it. You know, it's something that um, is not an intellectual construct when I'm, I'm playing it. I'm not thinking uh, at all uh, when I play a major scale C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Um, I just know uh, from, from muscle memory how it's supposed to sound. And, and I have that at, at my command. So it's a physical muscle memory. It's not an intellectual construct when I'm playing. It's certainly not an, in a, in a, uh, uh, an intellectual construct when I'm trying to express emotion, and, you know, and convey emotion and, and how something feels or uh, express even a, a chord progression, uh, the way that uh, a chord progression can lift your spirit or uh, take you in a different place than where you began, you know. Uh, music is that powerful. Um, it's it's something that we talk about as musicians uh, when in the practice room when we have to go over things from teacher to student. And this is definitely not what's going through my head during a performance, but uh, it helps it helps us to uh, conceptualize it and, and explain it and practice it and derive new lessons from it. Um, I think the goal of instruction is not to, you know, teach somebody what you know. It's the goal. The goal is to uh, show them a working method that will allow them to continue learning even without a teacher. And uh, so um, when you have a, on a groundwork like this, it really uh, paves the way for um, an individual to learn in the future at a really great pace. But you really have to focus on fundamentals. So uh, right now, uh, we've discovered uh, one way of playing a major scale. And here, we could do um, the F uh, scale right here also. Um, starting with, remember, this is C, E, E, F. So we've got F, E, E, B flat, F, E, B flat. So we want to find a C, right? So we've got a C here, A fret, B fret.
played 12, 12 C notes, maybe 11. We've played 11 C notes. I didn't play this one up here. So, um, yeah, there's uh, the, the note C is all over the fretboard. So it's just really important to be able to locate where the notes are. Yeah, because we wanted to play an F scale, right? I, I'm so, uh, sorry, I'm, uh, I've wandered a little. So F, F, See, it's very difficult to think that way. I'm just, I, I've got a grip on it, you know? You know, a basic understanding. Of, you know, kind of a joke here to play on words. I've got a basic understanding, a grip of, of how, to, how to construct a major scale. I've got a grip, right? And then um, I'm not thinking fret six. I'm not I'm telling somebody to play in the key of F by remembering where all the frets are. It's not that complicated. You just have to know a grip one grip right and know where to play it so we've got uh, I'm on fret 6 fret 8 fret 10 and fret 11 and then I move to fret 8 fret 10 fret 12 and fret 13 but I'm not thinking you know hey play play an F scale and I, oh I gotta remember this fret and that fret and that fret no okay you've got one grip uh, and uh, that's one way of doing it I actually I, I've got like um, I like the Berkeley system working with the Berkeley three note per string. There's other ways of doing it also, and it shouldn't be the only one that a guitarist knows. There's lots of uh, convenient ways of navigating the fretboard that are really useful depending on the situation and even the musical context on what, like what you hope to, to get across uh, that would really necess necessitate the use of different systems. And, um, you know, so I, I'm, I'm systems oriented on, on guitar all the way. The more systems that you know, the better. It's kind of like a cubist painting. You can see things from different perspectives and, and how they combine to, to form a, a collage, you know, which is basically how we, how we perceive things uh, as human anyhow. You know, even when we're like looking at uh, a scene of traffic, uh, you know, our brain is putting up putting together a huge amount of information to form a, a mental picture, you know, uh, and it's uh, really interesting how we do that. Um, and I, th I, it's the, I think the more complexity that you uh, uh, allow into the way that you think and the way that you see the world only, only enriches you. It only makes life better. You know, people, a lot of people will complain that, you know, I just wish things were simple again, you know. But being able to see things from, from different perspectives actually helps us uh, out of some situations where we feel like we're, we're, we're locked, we're, we're trapped into something, you know, we, ca we can't change, things can't be any different, you know, and, and people get the depressing sense of weight upon their shoulders. Just being able to think in a different way and, and have a, a brand new uh, perspective that you've never considered before is really one of the the best blessings that you can have in life. So I just I, I hope that adds um, to your uh, musical treasure chest here. You know, so we've just talked about uh, a major cons uh, scale construction across one string, okay, uh, and across two strings, the, the top two, um, and because of the way the fretboard is designed, you know, you've got an interval of a, um, a fourth across every string, except here, this would be a major third this would be a, a fourth, um, you know, it's, it's going to change slightly across uh, strings. You know, for instance, um, you know, right here, um, C, D, E, F actually doesn't change here. It changes here. So when you play C, D, E, F, C, D, E, F, your, your, um, your G is here. Starts there, so inst instead of starting uh, with you know a, a, a whole step, you're there's a, ma a distance of a, a major third right here. Sorry, of a minor third between frets. So you've got uh, a whole step and a half step in between your starting positions of the tetrachord. So C C D E F G A B C C B coordinating my singing with my guitar player. 
way here. I'll get there, believe me, I'm working on it. And uh, you'll hear um, songs from me soon where I'm singing and playing guitar. It's really fun. Uh, I just don't do it often. I, I'm a person who's very focused and it's, um, it really takes a lot for me to unwind. You know, uh, There's a lot to experience left musically for me uh, and I'm having a lot of fun with this. Yeah, so I, I hope you can enjoy this also. It's gonna make things a little easier for you. Uh, and when you just understand major uh, major scale construction in terms of one grip, how simple is that? One grip, right? And then you just have to know where to move um, the starting point of your grip. So it's whole step, whole step, half step. Uh, I can't emphasize that enough. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step. Whole step, whole step, half step, okay? So got to, uh, and then again here, whole tone, whole tone, half tone. Okay, whole tone, whole tone, half tone, right? You can see it, right? I'm trying to physically demonstrate. So we'll, um, I'll show you again. C, 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 E, F, G, A, B, C. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Right? C, E, F, G, A, B, C. C, B, A, G, F, E, B, C. And um, you could do that with uh, any starting point. Uh, here would be an F. So F, A, F, G. So, um, yeah, I wanted to cover one other thing. Uh, we're, uh, we're moving at a really quick clip here. So um, if we started at E, major scale, it's uh, with an open string. Okay, your uh, octave would be up here. This is a really good way of, of also counting the distance between intervals. Um, so this would be uh, E, open. That's, uh, this would be your second, your major second. This would be your major third. This would be your perfect fifth. Sorry, uh, perfect fourth, going in sequence here. Perfect sixth, perfect fifth. Here would be your sixth. Here would be your major seventh. Uh, you might remember the Leonard Cohen tune, Hallelujah, where uh, he's throwing out all these terms. Uh, it means nothing to a lot of people, or it's something mystical to a lot of people, but it's actually just standard nomenclature that he's going over in the context of a song, and it just sounds really whimsical. Uh, because of context, right? Uh, a lot of people associate that with a, um, the religious power of love. Uh, and it's a, yeah, it's a really great song, but um, the theory behind it is not that uh, mystical. It's really practical, actually. So that would be a perfect eighth or an octave above uh, from where we started. Okay, there's really only seven different notes in a major scale, um, but if you add that note right here, you play eight notes, seven different notes, but you play eight notes, so you're repeating the first note that you play an octave up. So going over that again, uh, E, open E, that's your root note, your ground note. E, F sharp, F sharp, G sharp, A. So same fret positions, 1, 3, 5, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 13. Or you could think of it in terms of grips, you know, uh, you would have to uh, almost visualize your grip uh, behind the nut here, right? You've got your grip there, 
And then you're gonna play it also starting on the B. So you've got your uh, your Grips starting on the B note. Why does that look funny? Okay, here we go. There we go, because we're, uh, we're starting at the 12th fret, at the first fret, the open string, and we're including the open string in that on the first fret, that's why. So, starting on the 12th fret. into the context where I'm thinking I'm starting at the first note so I want to keep this open um, so open there's my my a my four so there's a, a half the good a good way of remembering uh, is between steps three and four and step seven and eight I also hammer that in during the course of lessons um, that um, that's what happens between step three and four you got a half step here Okay, so uh, we're going to talk about uh, harmonizing E major. Um, yeah, so we're going to work with an open string. So. pretty uh, it's like uh, it almost sounds song-like it sounds very musical when you harmonize a major scale so we're um, kind of uh, we're going to be anchoring the root note on the first string so uh, we have uh, positions in mind and then you have notes on so uh, the root note uh, is going to be in your uh, not your highest string your highest sounding string okay so um, There's only two types, uh, uh, actually three types of uh, chords that we're learning when we're using uh, three note chords and a harmoni in a harmonized family of C major, or actually E major here. Any, any major scale is really gonna have three types of chords in the family. It's gonna have a major chord. It's gonna have three major chords on C, uh, E, A, and B. And then uh, you're gonna have minor chords on F sharp, G sharp, C sharp, uh, so that's two types of chords. And then you've got a seventh note, uh, the oddest note of the scale. I guess it's the red-headed stepchild of the family. It's going to be uh, D sharp, uh, which is um, a diminish. You're going to take a f the fifth note of the scale and you're going to flatten it. So uh, it's the only different chord um, when it comes to uh, your E major family. Um, and so we've got three different shapes that we learn uh, to accompany that. So uh, e major, the chords, uh, uh, major chords in E major would be E, uh, e, um, e major, A sharp, uh, I'm sorry, A major or B major. So um, the way that it's spelled as E major is spelled E, G sharp, B. Uh, a major is spelled A, C sharp, E. Uh, B major is spelled B, uh, D sharp, F sharp. Um, and um, it's really, I, I, I don't always have that in mind. Um, it's it's kind of like background information that I've backgrounded. What, what uh, I find really useful is to, to know a grip. You know one grip and you can apply it in three different situations across the fretboard. So your basic gr a grip is going to look like this. So here's your E. Your B would be just right below it and your G sharp is here. So it's actually... It's an inversion, okay? Uh, uh, if uh, you were to play this 
skipping every other um, you know uh, well that doesn't work in E major uh, you're playing uh, I, I'm not going to demonstrate on piano right now I don't have that in focus for the camera uh, but it's E one three five that's that's in root position starting with the G sharp in the bass. Okay, uh, because we we we've just learned um, how to spell E major, E S sharp, G sharp, A B C sharp, D sharp, E. So your your major chord again, uh, your grip is going to move. So E. Okay, so those those are our major chords. second grip uh, that we're going to learn is a uh, this is an easy grip because it's straight up and down that's your uh, that's your f sharp there's an f sharp minor there's a g sharp minor and there's a c sharp minor so you've got uh, at the second fret fourth fret and all the way up here on the ninth fret It's shaped a little different, okay? Um, you're gonna flatten the fifth, and the fifth is on the flat string, uh, on the second string here, right? So if you have straight up and down, and you're gonna drop this a half a step, and you get that when you're on the seventh degree of the scale. To har in order to harmonize it, you have to drop that second string half fret. So from, uh, from, from the bottom. <laughs> Yeah, so there's really, I'm only playing with uh, three grips. So you've got the major grip, you've got your minor grip, and then you've got your uh, diminished grip. So, um, yeah, and then you put it all together. Um, you just remember where the, the major scale is. Da 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 da. Um, Our fret positions. I just sang the E major scale uh, using fret positions, and uh, that's where we're going to lock our our root note in the scale. Even though um, we're playing the third uh, uh, in the root, uh, because we're using inversions, um, we're gonna we're gonna um, we're gonna cite everything um, starting uh, with the open E on the top string. Yeah, so uh, once, once more. Um. There's 
a grip change, okay? So you got one grip, here's a second grip, a minor grip, a minor grip, a grip change on the fifth fret, same grip on the seventh fret, here's your minor grip, okay? Here's your, your um, diminished grip, I want to say half diminished, it's only half diminished really if you include the seventh previous here, and then, oh yeah, it's okay, uh, and then you cap it off with, you know, the same grip that you started with. Yeah, uh, so I, I, I promised a student that, I, I promised a, a friend that I would uh, uh, tell him, uh, because we also learned, <coughs> we also learned four note chords and uh, how to use grips to form those. And uh, uh, he was asking some r really great questions. Uh, and it's good to ask questions, you know, I, 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 it's something that uh, I, I haven't asked in a while. Um, and it's not because it's not important. It is. Um, he, he was asking, my, my student was asking, asking me, like, why, uh, why would it be important to know uh, three note chords and, and four note chords? I believe it was something along the lines of the question, uh, of his question, you know, and um, why it becomes important. Um, I. You know, uh, it's, 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 it's something that I think every musician knows uh, when they question why, you know, it's, um, uh, you have to understand it in, in certain ways. And I think one of the reasons why uh, it's important to know, it's not uh, the only way that you can answer the question, but one of the, one of the uh, reasons why it's important is in the context of, let's say you're with a musician on, an, on a stage and he calls a song that, that you don't know, but it's like a, a pop tune that has some very uh, simple uh, functional harmony and uh, uh, calls a tune that uh, has one, four, fi and, and five in it, but uh, he, he's, he doesn't tell you the chord progression in advance, right? He doesn't go over the tune, he just plays it. Uh, one thing that you can, uh, one thing that you might do is pick out the key uh, actually, the very first thing that I would try and do when you're trying to adapt is just pick out the key signature that you're in, and with a, a real simple pop sh song that only uses three note chords, it's going to be difficult to get that information across in a few seconds um, uh, because of the way that uh, it's laid out. Um, here, let me let me go off camera for a second. Uh, I want to get a, a a whiteboard here and go over something. Uh, So um, I'm just going to draw out two key signatures uh, here. So uh, I'm going to be working in a key of C. <coughs> Excuse me, my voice is shot. I haven't done so much singing in a while. I do a lot of talking all day. So C is spelled out C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and the key of G is spelled a little differently. It's got a lot of notes and a lot of chords in common. And uh, that's one of the main reasons why something like this is really important. So when you start using fourth note, uh, a fourth note in your chords, you're getting a lot more harmonic information across really quickly. Uh, that uh, uh, allows you to determine what key you, you are in on the spot. So this is uh, how uh, I'm spelling <coughs> C major, or how C major and G, G major is spelled. You'll notice that, oops, and I'm drawing all over my pants legs. Uh, you'll notice uh, this is a permanent marker too. Uh, it's a dry erase marker. I think it'll come out in the wash, maybe with some lemon or something. <coughs> and I need to go buy lemons tomorrow. Um, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp. There's a half step between three and four. Um, you'll notice that um, the half steps are always between step seven and eight. Okay, and um, Okay, so the half steps are here. You'll notice that the scales share half steps even, right? B and C are, are half steps, and the half steps change. Um, so where am I going with this? Okay, so what we also need to do is we also need to uh, show how a major chord is spelled out. <coughs> and I don't know if I left enough space on the whiteboard. Let me go ahead and, and uh, 
uh, write in the uh, harmonic structure up to uh, the fifth degree. Uh, so this is just going to take a second. Let me go off screen with a whiteboard here and uh, just draw an angry scene here, write in everything. You see is easy, right? You don't have to think uh, uh, think really hard in the key of C. You know, it's it uh, comes natural to, to to think in the key of C for a lot of a lot of people. And I think that's the way we usually began. We began simple and then work our way around the circle. <coughs> so you may see here, man, I keep on drawing on my pants leg. Uh, you may see here that C, E, and G, well, we've got C, E, and G, D, F, and A, E, G, and uh, B. That's supposed to be a B. Uh, F, A, C, D, G, B, and D. I know what this one looks like. You can barely read my writing, right? Chicken scratch. A, C, E, B, D, F, C, E, G is how we spell uh, C major. And um, you'll notice that uh, these keys have a lot in common when you're only a lot of chords in common. They're not a lot of chords. They have a few chords in common. So if you hear these chords expressed in a, in a musical context, um, it's really going to be difficult to determine on the spot, <coughs> where that's where I'm going with it, it's really going to be difficult to tell on the spot, you know, what key you're in. You might fumble around for a few moments. You might sound somewhat dissonant. You know, um, F, F sharp against C sounds really great in some contexts. You know, uh, if you're playing a, a Lydian type of harmony on uh, your major scale degree, uh, it, it sounds really great. You know, if you know how to use it properly or use it in that context, it can sound really great. But it's not always going to sound great. Sometimes that F sharp will clash when you're, when you're playing in the key of C. You expect to hear an F natural. And when you play that, it's kind of jarring. Unless you know how to use it properly. I just wouldn't be throwing it out there like at every opportunity you can. But in a lot of contexts, it will so actually sound quite nice. So here's what I want to show you. Um, this scale right, degree, right? Your first scale degree is going to be your fourth scale degree over here, right? So C major is spelled C E G. Uh, that's going to be your fourth scale degree. You've also um, got your your fifth scale degree that's uh, similar or, or is the same. So one, two, three, four, five. Your your um, G major here is going to uh, be the same as your one over here. Okay. You, uh, also, you've got um, a minor scale degrees that are similar uh, across keys. So uh, your your D actually here that's not uh, the same, but your E is going to be the same. You've got an E and you've got an A. Uh, so that's your E G B right here is also going to be in this key. They s they're they're closely related families. You've got an E G B here. You've got an A C here, right? Okay, they're gonna have some chords that are distinct, but they're closely related keys, uh, um, and you've got uh, three groups of major keys next to each other in the circle of fifths. So <coughs> closely related, as you as you spread out around the circle, what you're gonna find is that you're drifting into <coughs> keys that have less and less in common, which can make modulations a little more difficult. You know, in so, some uh, in, uh, some closely related modulations, you want to handle that by using chords that they have in similar. And when you're working with three note three note chords, it's a lot easier to modulate. Uh, the, the harmony's not as uh, specific; it can be generalized across keys. So I, I think I've circled like well, I, and I think well, yeah, I've circled everything that uh, the keys have in common. So you can see here that it's got. It's got four chords in common uh, between uh, when you're a click away on the circle of fifths. You've got four chords in common across keys. 
So if you hear, and it's very common to go from a one to four, like take take wild things, one, four, and five, you know, if you're just hearing one and four, if you're just hearing um, or, uh, C or G and C, you really can't tell, uh, it's, you know, whether or not you are uh, in a key of G or key of C, you could generalize uh, sometimes that, you know, the first chord you hear is always going to be one, and it's not. You, sometimes you might hear the six uh, in a song, you might hear the two. You might hear the four chord in a key of song. You might you might have a song that starts off in the, in the uh, you know, uh, on the four chord. I think some Beach Boy songs do that. So you might start off with a, uh, with a C and actually be playing to the f uh, four. And if you're going to be, uh, if, if you hear that on the bandstand, somebody starts playing a song that starts on the four chord, and you think that's one, and uh, you're playing a C, you're going to be playing, you know, C major across a song that uh, is whose dominant, uh, dominant home chord, or its, its home chord is, you know, a fourth a fourth away, a fifth below, and uh, you know it, it could be confusing. So it really helps. <laughs> Excuse me. One important reason to um, go ahead and uh, define things uh, uh, up to you know uh, four note chords is because it, uh, it you can quickly identify. Uh, the function that something uh, a chord has in the context, a musical context, uh, it's more specific. And I, I guess that's a long-winded explanation. I, 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 I could I could go over it in different ways, and it's probably best to go over it in different ways. If somebody uh, wants to chime in uh, on this later uh, and add their musical experience on, please do. Uh, I, I would I would welcome it. I'd be glad to hear it because I, I don't think I'm explaining it uh, uh, well enough. And I haven't worked through the entire explanation. I, I guess that's a, a, a fairly deep subject that I could uh, be understood or explained a lot more clearly. Um, uh, because it, it, I, it's one important reason why <coughs> you would uh, need to know uh, four note chords along with three note chords in a, in a musical context. So that's one reason that I can think of now. Um, It's also more colorful when you add uh, four note chords. It adds a level of complexity. I know it's not always desirable to have complexity. A lot of people like simple songs because they're catchy, right? I love simple songs because you can also elaborate on them and, and make them make them beautiful in ways that uh, you know uh, people typically wouldn't think of uh, 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 like a simple song. Simple songs are beautiful. You know, uh, there are some melodies that are going to be timeless because they're so simple. Um, it doesn't mean that um, they're not worth playing or um, that, you know, it's just uh, too easy. Um, it's just that um, people don't know how to elaborate on them. People will stay away from simple tunes a lot of times because they, they think it's just too easy. But really understanding how to elaborate a tune is seeing how complex things really are sometimes, you know. So it's it's really great to uh, to focus on four note chords because they're they're more elaborate, they're more specific. Um, uh, they uh, like what would happen? You wouldn't have barbershop quartets, right? <laughs> you know, you wouldn't walk down the street and uh, hear doo wop if you didn't have four note chords. You know, so uh, even in within uh, American history, our, our own musical history, you would be missing a lot of music if you didn't have four note chords. So it's important to elaborate sometimes and be specific uh, because of the color that it adds to our life. Um, it would be, you know, at the same time, you know, uh, uh, that I say that uh, simple songs are, are really complex. You would also miss a lot of beauty if you didn't have these more complex chords. And you could have, you know, uh, you have ten fingers, right? 
Uh, most people have 10 fingers, one, five on the left, five on the right. So you could play a 10 note chord on piano if you want, and you could probably express <coughs> 10 note <coughs> harmony on guitar fairly easily by arpeggiating and everything. Uh, your uh, ear tends to hear harmonies and groups. So you could play 10 notes in sequence, you know, and just build a 10 note chord that way on guitar. Um, and uh, yeah, you could, you could express 10 note harmony, you know, so it's not a matter of, you know, of what I, what, what's the, what's the most that I have to learn on guitar to, to make it work. It's a, uh, I think it's a matter of exploring the options that you do have. You know, and uh, some people uh, won't need, you know, four note. Well, you do. I think you need four note chords. There are even uh, five note chords and six note chords on guitar that are really easy to reach and that are in common use, right? Uh, people talk about cowboy chords on guitar. Um, yeah, so I, I'm going to go ahead and end this right here because I'm, I'm drifting. I'm not really focused on a subject and I'm just talking right now. And I think I've got the main point of my lesson across which is just how to uh, construct a major scale uh, in triads uh, in E major across the guitar which is really cool I mean that's a lot for one lesson for anybody to absorb it's I'm, I'm really hoping that my students can consolidate a lot of information that I have and play through some pra practice exercise that I've given out and uh, you know so I, I hope this helps some and I, I wanted to answer uh, a question um, that was posed in class and I think I, I uh, approached it uh, somewhat and, um, knowing four note chords is really practical because it can help you on the spot sometimes you know I'm just being a able to identify <coughs> what your one is and it's a it's a judgment and you really have to use your artistic judgment you know because you're not always gonna know the song that's being called on stage uh, but you can you can feel your way through it and uh, uh, just based on the way that things sound against each other like if I'm playing in, in, in key of C and uh, you know because I'm carrying a C and a G chord and then something sounds out and um, you know it's an F sharp that I play that uh, sounds out you know I, I can have that fixed um, so it's so to speak, you know, I, I well, you know, I could think to myself, well, I'm in the key of the key of C because that F sharp sounds out, and then I could I could go back uh, a level, dial it back a notch, and, and play in the key of C. So it's um, something that uh, um, is really important because it can help you uh, on the spot uh, when you're working on a tune together that. It may not be as familiar with one player as, uh, you know, as another. You know, and it helps 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 people get along musically when you share a common language like that. So yeah, I mean, it's important. I I would go over it uh, because it's just really essential training. Um, and yeah, um, so it's easier to think in three note and four note contacts. Uh, uh, people do think in five note contacts on guitar and even six notes I mean you could include open strings but I think the the, the most usage people are going to get a lot of mileage out of three note and four note chords um, because of the way that you use them you know it's it's uh, really important to start there and I, th I you could you could start and end there really because it's uh, even though it's a, uh, a simple structure you could really uh, just use it in, in so many ways you could go to town on that information and just make it work you know so it's really not I, I don't think it's necessary to to hammer in uh, five note chords and six note chords as um, you know a stock and trade um, you'll get a lot of mileage out of that too but it's uh, just having a smaller core to work with is going to be a lot more flexible uh, in a utilitarian sense. You could really just put down a super highway uh, w with the information uh, that's contained in, in three note chords. Um, and uh, 
Yeah, so, I, and I think a lot of people are coming to that con con conclusion, um, um, you know, and, and jazz and in rock, you know, I see a lot of people working with triads, uh, which is great. I mean, it's a great sound and, and uh, yeah, it's just really fascinating uh, how much you can do with it. Yeah, so um, don't, uh, please don't get disappointed um, and, and don't get confused. You know, three note chords and, and four note chords maybe can, uh, it's like, well, why do I have to learn all this at first? It's, um, yeah, don't get confused. It's, it's really important and, and don't get disappointed with the amount of work that you're putting in uh, because a lot of it is really simple. Um, uh, and that's why I'm calling it fundamental. After a while, it just becomes uh, second nature. Um, it's the ways that you can use it that are, are really amazing. And, uh, and complicated and, and not frustrating. Um, it's just because you're working with simple tools, right? Um, so once you have a grip or an understanding on these simple tools that you're using, um, it's, uh, there's a, a lot more flexibility, a lot more freedom and, cre and creativity in using those, those tools. So just getting the, the basic fundamentals down is, is really important. And that's one of the reasons why I, I'm stressing, yeah, let's uh, three note chords and four note chords. It seems like a, sometimes it might seem pedantical. Uh, it might seem like it's over elaborate, but it's actually necessary and, and fundamental. And uh, it's, it's theory that uh, no working musician should avoid or, or bypass, you know, because uh, it'll that's the confusing part is what has really is walking into a situation where you don't understand uh, the functional use of like a uh, imagine uh, not being able to self-correct when uh, a, a song is playing in key uh, in the key of G and, and you're playing you're playing C um, you know uh, and not not being able to, to hear that or understand that that's the confusing part and that would be the frustrating part is when you're in the middle of a performance and you're not able to pull that off because you know you don't understand what's what's happening around you it's a context you know it's like the people around you are speaking a different language and you haven't been able to identify it properly yet and and that's uh, the frustrating part is not what happens in the practice room it's being with your friends and not being able to communicate on, on the level that they are with the proficiency that they are because you, you don't get everything you can get by you know you, you could say well hey i'm just gonna avoid <laughs> you know f uh when uh um uh, we're, we're playing the song if you don't understand you could say well i'm not playing that note again but you know that that's also frustrating in a sense and limiting it's very limiting so i can't play this why wow why you know um uh, that that could also be frustrating not having your your full freedom as a musician to express yourself would be really frustrating so i mean that that's the way that i look at it it's not confusing it's um it's liberating to be able to to think and uh to express yourself in, in different ways and um that's why i i, I ask my students that we we go over this even even if it may be frustrating at first i don't think it'll be frustrating for long um you know um it's uh there's a lot of I went over a lot tonight. I really did. I'm grateful that uh, we've gotten this far. Um, it's just um, probably going to spend some time, more time with in the classroom when it comes to major skill. Uh, sorry, major chord construction and minor chord construction because I, I really want you to be able to spell uh, on the spot and uh, uh, without having to think about it. It's it's a really important skill to have. Um, so yeah, we're gonna work on it. We're gonna work on some Nirvana and then uh, some, uh, just some fundamental theory and uh, some blues also. Yeah, we can cover some really great blues with the theory that we know and we've learned tonight. Uh, so that's gonna be cool too. You know, I love blues. Uh, that was my first love, man. Just um, you know, learning learning blues. You know. <laughs> You know, bugging my little brother. Hey, man, what does this sound like? Do you like this? You know, and he's like, what is that? You know, and to me, it's music to me, right? When you're uh, when you're a beginner and you learn something, it's really exciting. Buggy.
your brother at 11.30 at night, hey, man, what does this sound like? Do you like this? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> no? Yeah, so it's really um, it's really fun. It's an adventure. Okay, well, I'm going to call it quits. I said I was going to end this. So uh, I'll talk to you later. All right? Bye for now.